Right, evening guys. Uh, today's video is all about Outdoor Active. So that's the app I use for navigating when I'm on a walk. So I can plan my routes, track my routes and navigate using the app. So I'll take you through that, the basic features, not all of the features because there's a lot on there. Blogging, uh, looking at uh, you know travel and accommodation, ski, ski reports, stuff like that. Not interested in that. I'm going to take you through the basics of how to plan, track and navigate your route and some of the features on the map. I'll do it on both a desktop and the uh, mobile, because uh, I do both, um, depending on what I want to do. There's pros and cons to both. I'll also tell you for the pros and cons of the different um, the different uh, subscription mechanisms you can have on uh, Outdoor Active. There's the free, the pro and the pro plus. I'll go through very quickly on those. So um, that's the idea of this video. I'll leave it there. Uh, comment below if there's anything else you want me to do a video on. Uh, not only fans, by the way. <laughs> Uh, and then I'll try and do my best to accommodate that. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to get out on a walk once a week at least. All right, so, okay, we'll, we'll proceed now and get on to how to use Outdoor Active. Right, guys, okay, so the first part, I'm going to show you how to use Outdoor Active on your desktop, okay? So you go to outdooractive.com, uh, and then you'll come to this home page, and you can see in the right-hand corner here, I can go and log into my account. I'll do that first, and then I'll go for the basics of the map, the route planner, and then route finder okay and then what i'll do in the next step is i'll go and take you for the different subscription models and then finally i'll go through how to use it on your mobile and then actually go out and use it on a route while i'm walking okay so that's the plan of attack um so outdoor active i think they're a german company they took over view ranger so i was on view ranger before I moved over to outdoor active when they bought uh view ranger out so you get a lot of the functions that view ranger had and a bit more a few people have complained saying it's not as good i've had no problems personally uh with uh, the gps and stuff like that so um I, I think it's just a bit of a storm in a teacup people don't always like change but there are other things that outdoor active can do so the things I'm going to focus on is probably these top three, the map, the route finder and route planner. You can have things like travel guides, you can find places to visit, eat and drink, uh, huts where you can stay, uh, accommodation, skis, resorts, crags. So a lot of this is geared around mountaineering as well as uh, just walking and, and the biking and stuff like that. You can go and look at current weather conditions and webcams and avalanche reports. So a lot of that really is uh, around mountaineering more than anything, but you know, again, could be quite useful and then you can go and set up collections and stuff like that it's quite a lot of goes on there's a big community and challenges and groups you can join but i'm, I'm going to keep this to the basics today um if you want to go for any of those other elements let me know or if not there's quite a lot on the outdoor active home page as well but i'm just going to give you my experience of, of how to use this okay so if we go and look at my home page to start off with i log in um i save my login just save me a bit of time but if I go and click on this, this is my home page. So on the right hand side, in terms of overview, I've got my profile, I've got tracks, plans and routes. So routes, okay, if you do a plan, go and navigate, you can turn them into a route. You can also turn a track into a route. A route you can then decide to publish if you want. So there's quite a big uh, sort of community spirit on uh, on Outdoor Active where you can go and look over people's routes, download them, uh, take them and tweak them, whatever. But uh, that's a general sort of modus operandi. You'll create a plan. You probably might do that first and, and navigate it in case you want to make any tweaks. Then you can turn that into a route and share it. So you can see I've got about 105 uh, routes. I've got 14 plans at the moment that I'm working on. And then I've got about 57 tracks. I lost a few in terms of... Uh, I migrated my phone and for some reason I lost a lot of tracks but a track is when you go on a route or a plan it'll actually track where you actually went how long you took the all the different things like ascent and descent so if I went and clicked on them I'd see a list of all my routes for example but I won't do that at the moment I can see my bookmarks so again I'll show you on the map in a minute I can bookmark routes and I can bookmark maps and then into my own personal collection I can make collections as well Another thing which I'll come on to, not necessarily take you through, but if you have Pro or Pro Plus, you do get benefits and discounts through the partner scheme. So worth keeping an eye on that. They do get up to 30% off in some cases. I can see my recently viewed routes and plans that I've looked at. They also have challenges on here, so they might say walk a thousand miles in six months and stuff. There are some community groups as well, but again, I'm not going to go into detail on them. Any updates that you've made recently, new routes, or you've changed the route, or whatever, that's kept here. A very quick summary in the middle of all your content. 
any photos you've uploaded so you can upload photos to a route uh, or a plan if you like and then any contributions you've made whether you've answered a question or you've commented on someone else's routes and then a link to the service there so that's your home page okay quite a nice little summary of where you are you can go and look in your library which shows you all of your routes etc and there's a bit of community minded stuff as well so challenges and stuff like that but we'll stick to the basics today like i've said i'll try and do that so we're going to go to the map first so if i go to the map this is located on castleton uh, if this icon in the right hand corner do le bottom left hand corner bloody hell uh, is where uh, it'll pick up your location if you've got gps switched on so normally on the mobile that will home in on where you are um, here you can go and search for places so I don't know if I typed in hope in the in the in the in the, in the, the high peak. You, you sometimes do then have to put a bit more because this is a global sort of tool. So now I'm there. So I could go and look at that. That will take me to hope. Zooms them up right out as well. So that's the other thing that you can do. So if I just delete that, is um, you can zoom in and out of the map. So you can zoom right out if you want to a European level because this does have all of the maps in most of Europe so if you were on holiday in Italy or somewhere like that you would still get access to all of those Switzerland, France, places like that anyway I'll zoom back in I'll go and find Castleton because that's where we were based it does remember some searches or places you've been so you can see that's the sort of area it's covering so if I zoom into Castleton again you've got the different levels of map so you know, you've got right out to the one, the sort of road maps that you, you know, you sort of get in atlases. Then you can zoom into the sort of one to fifty thousand, and then right down to the one in twenty-five thousand, I think it is. So this is the typical ordnance survey map that we all know and love, uh, all the sort of uh, footpaths and everything else on it. So I'll just take that off there. The other thing you can see here, if you click on here, you can see the coordinates and stuff like that. Uh, if you want to find a particular grid reference. You've got the British 10 figure grid reference here, so it's quite accurate. You've got the Irish one, the Swiss one, you've got what three words. I think that's a recent addition, that's quite useful. And then you've got obviously, you can go and put your location, latitude, longitude in quite accurately. So you can either go and find or enter coordinates as well if you want to find a particular location. So that's quite useful. Okay, you can zoom in and out, like I mentioned. You can show content. What that will do is show any routes, and I'll come on to that in, in Route Finder, but it will show, if I went and hovered over one of these, for example, it will show you the route, and you can see that highlighted in red on the map. You can go and click on that if you want to go and look at what that is, but I'll turn it off, it gets a bit too busy. Uh, you can make it full screen or not, so that's quite useful if you're planning, and this is probably how I'll do it now, I'll leave that there. Uh, you've got other features down the right-hand side here. My map, so you can basically bookmark uh, locations or routes etc onto your map like a personal map you can look at the different content so again if you go on there you can see how many routes are in the area how many huts or ski resorts not much use of that here uh, all that type of thing and then you can actually go and say well actually show me what types of uh, routes there are what a hiking cycling and running as you expect one mountaineering route and then if you click on that you can go down to the next thing so long distance hiking types of walk there's different categories here water sports not quite sure <laughs> yeah, but then anyway that's another story okay so you can go and look and filter on different content and just see what's there that's quite useful um the other thing you've got you can simply go and add a new point on the map like i don't know a viewpoint or something a point of interest for people you also have this buddy beacon feature here Basically, if you have other people, friends or family on Outdoor Active, you can essentially, uh, when you're out walking, switch your buddy beacon on and that will track you. So uh, they can go and watch you and view where you're going and heading if they want, or more importantly, if there was a problem, like you hadn't got back in time and when you were expecting to get back from the route or you know they got worried about what was happening and where you were and something might have gone wrong, they can actually see where you're actually located from your phone so with a GPS signal. There are audio guides, so you can turn on audio guides and there'll be some of those round and about where you can listen, but uh, I've not really used that. It's a bit, feel a bit like a museum. Okay, so there are your features. So some quite good features there. 
you can go to the root planner here. I'll show you that in a moment because you can go from you can either do that from here or you can do it from the toolbar. So I'll show you in a second. You have a 3D map, so you can do a 3D preview, which is quite good. So you can see there, I can navigate around the 3D map. If I press control, I can rotate it. It does show things like mountains in the area. It is only mountains, so you won't see many in the Peak District. Perhaps if you're in Scotland, you'd see a few more. But essentially, anything over 2,000 foot, that will show you. So you can move around that. You can navigate through that. Um, so it's quite a nice little nifty. Gives you a bit more idea of what the topography might look like of the area. So as you can see there, it also uses a compass there as well, etc. Okay, and we can move back. Um, Castleton. That's that quarry I went around last week, for example. So again, you can, you know, move around, look into that. Uh, it's quite accurate, actually. So anyway, um, we'll just take that back to 2D. And then we're back in Castleton again. Right. You can have different maps. So there's various different maps here. If I press the icon on the bottom right-hand corner there, you can get your classic open street map, which is useful to a degree, but you know, uh, fairly basic. But you know. Outdoor Active is the same, or very similar to that, perhaps with a bit more information on. Obviously, one we know and love, which is the out, um, is basically the uh, Ordnance Survey maps. So, you know, you can save yourself a lot of money on maps. Now, I will be, I do take a map with me sometimes, depending on where I am, but just as a backup, because uh, you never know, phones get dropped and stuff like that. But uh, you'll see on when I did a mobile, I can go out all day with my phone and only use 30-40% uh, of the battery um, but I'll take you through that in a bit on a separate element. You've got alpine maps, they're more skewed around climbing, um, there's a bike map as well, uh, Harvey maps, so some of these you only get on the Pro Plus, I think these bottom four you only get on the Pro and Pro Plus. So you don't get them on the sort of basic package, but I'm going to go through all of that. They're quite good Harvey maps. They're quite well renowned for walkers and hikers and people like that. So again, slightly different format, but again, can be very detailed. And this bottom one is a compass map, which again, I think is more more used in, uh, in places like the Alps and that. So we'll go back to the one we know and love. You can look at different ways and activities. So you can say, well, I only want to use hiking. That's all I'm interested in. As you can see there, any national trails, hiking routes are turned on. I can turn it off, I can turn on cycling routes. So again, you can see here, there's a national cycling route here, shown in purple. Uh, you can go look at mountain biking. So again, some routes here for mountain biking. Uh, winter activities, not much there. Horse riding. So again, a few routes there, you can go horse riding, bridleways. I'll turn that off. But other things at the bottom here, you can have a map that shows slope angles, so you know not really much use here, but probably would be if you were in the mountain here. But you can see here where it's showing some steeper slopes. You can have photos, notices, and closures, avalanche reports, and webcams. I think around here there is one webcam on Hollins Cross there. Yeah, and you can click on and go and look at that webcam. So some quite useful layers there. Um, I'll switch those off for now because what we're doing here is basic sort of navigation. Right, so I'll close that. So you can go to Route Planner two ways. If I take the old full screen off for a minute, you can go up here, click on it. You can go directly here. Okay. Now you can go very simply over here, type uh, two coordinates in and then um, ask it to plan. What I've tended to found is that um, <laughs> yeah, one of a better way. Uh, let's turn that off. Yeah, let's put it. Oh, I think I turn that one off. Yeah, turn that off. Yeah. Sorry about that. I left those filters on. Um, it's not particularly brilliant, so you know um, I tend to plan a route by you know putting all the waypoints on myself. You can you can use that, but um, I prefer to do it this way. If I go down to a full screen, I can see more on it. I get a wider picture, which is primarily why you use a desktop for planning. You can see more than is on a mobile screen. You can zoom in and out, stuff like that. Okay, so if I'm planning a route, it's it's very, very simple. I pick my starting point and I make a, a click with the left button on the mouse or your keyboard or whatever. So, for instance, I live in that little building there. So I'm going to start there. That will give me my first point, and you can see the left-hand side, it puts the coordinates in, 
Uh, if you want to look at more detail of those coordinates, you can see the grid references and things like that. So there you go. That's all down the left hand side there. Okay. But uh, it's basically in longitude and latitude, I think. So that's my first point. I'm probably going to come down this road here on Sunday. But it will do also at the bottom here. You see the route there. Um, that little button goes along the route so you can see your profile and elevation as you go along. So you've got along the bottom there, you've got the distance and then the elevation and the highest elevation you are so far between those two points. So that's quite useful. Um, and then basically, I'm just going to hide this now so I've got more screen to look at. Okay, and then essentially. We can just move that. So we'll come down here now. So I'm going to go down this road here. And then along this footpath. And then down here. It's just quite slick this. So it will just keep, you know. And you can go quite far if you said I'm going to go right down here. You don't have to do every little click. It will automatically uh, take you down the correct route. Okay. However, I'll show you this in a moment. If I then said I wanted to go across there, it has your the blip now and again. There's clearly a bridle way there, but it's continuing to go between these two points. So what I can do, if I undo that, because that looks a bit odd, I can turn off this sort of automatic route finding and just do a very simple straight line like that. Okay, and then I can switch this back on. So then I'm going to go, right, okay, you know what, I'm going to go back down the limestone way now. Again, I could probably get that all the way back down to Castleton quite easy. So I just go here. It's just going to follow that route all the way back. I can go then here. I can close the loop. So if I press that, that will close the loop back to my start point. I can reverse it. I can import the GPX track. So on here, uh, you'll see on my links on the videos, I've uploaded links to the GPX files. Um, so when you're planning a route, you can just very simply import the GPX if you've got that file. So I think I've hosted them in the Google Docs. There's plenty of websites that have them, like haroldstreet.co.uk and places like that. I think that's the one where you can just go and download the GPX tracks for free and then import that into your navigation or tool like Outdoor Active uh, and away you go. But I'm quite happy with that route now. That's a circular route. If I look at this uh, little summary at the bottom, I've basically... You know, you can see that the highest point I'm going to reach is around 1,400 foot. It's 3.7 miles. And not too bad when you look at that profile. It also shows you here at the bottom, you can see from the how much is paths, how much is dirt road, how much might be on an actual road, uh, how much is in the forest. And they're always in an element of unknown. But you can see here, dirt road for so long, asphalt for so long, a path, back on a path. So it's quite slick that, uh, I do like those. So anyway, I'm happy with that route now. Um, so I want to go and continue now. So I press continue. That now is saved as a plan or will be. It defaults here to the drafted and the date, but I'll just put test plan in for now. This will sync with your phone. I'll show on your phone where you can sync on your phone with the desktop version, any new routes, any new plans or whatever will be uh, synced. You can type a bit of a summary in here. Okay, blah, blah, blah. And then you can save that plan. Okay. You can continue editing if you want to, or, or you see where you are, or you can go and see the plan. So we'll just tick, see the plan this time. So you can create a route from a plan. Now, again, I mentioned earlier, routes are a bit different. They're um, the routes that you can publish or keep them private and navigate to them. You can navigate to a plan as well. Uh, but routes you can share and stuff like that. You can edit the plan, you can share with friends, you can copy the link, share on Facebook, Twitter or Pinterest, uh, etc. You can bookmark it as a favourite for yourself. You can then download, you can do 3D previews of the, you can print them. You can download it in these three different file formats here, GPX, KML, FIT. You can also continue to plan a route here if you want. You can copy that route, so you can copy a route if you want to make some slight changes, but not start from scratch. Um, I'm not sure what the fitness one does. Don't tend to use that. So I've now got my plan. That has been saved. I can then go back, navigate to that plan, etc, etc. Okay, so that is how to plan a route. Another way 
to look and find routes is to go on the route finder. So if I click on route finder here, again the map on the right hand side will show them. Each of these little icons is, and if you hover over it, it will show you the route, which is quite useful. Um, some are mine, some will be others people's, and then what you can do is filter them. So you might want to say, well, you want to look at mountain biking routes. And again, similarly, if you hover over them, you'll see them. But um, what I want to do is hiking routes. You can also got other filters here, where you can do on the types, long distance, etc., etc. You can sort by the most relevant, or you can sort best results, distance, duration, ascent, low to high, titles A to Z. So again, you can sort them. You can also filter them on things like difficulty, difficult, moderate, or easy. Just be wary of that because um, that is all down to the individual who's created that route and their view of whether it's difficult or easy. Uh, I had one of my routes that I published and someone really kicked off about it because it's basically an ascent up Jacob's Ladder from Edel onto Kinder Scout, over the, to uh, Kinder Low and the Downfall, then back across the middle of the plateau. Now, those of you who've done that will know that you need to know what you're doing there. The plan, the path isn't really uh, good in harsh conditions like a heavy rain or snowfall. You pretty much won't see it. So you really are reliant on knowing either how to use a GPS app very well or ultimately compass and walking on a bearing. So uh, I did put it down as difficult and I made clear comments to that fat but this knob he just kicked off about it so you know there you go and then you can filter here uh, distances you know I only want to see anything from 14 to 60 miles or I only want to see anything from 4 to maybe 12 miles because you know that's my and duration of sense. so you can do all these good filters on these different routes so you can find something that's relevant to you you can filter it on what time of year and then his features so on a route uh, I'll probably show you in a bit actually how to turn a plan into a route and uh, all the different fields you can populate but you can filter for things that are dog friendly for example you can think you want, want to know a route where there's a refreshment stop on the way like a pub scenic multi-stage out and back circuit so some really good you know whether you need public transport to get there some really good stuff uh, and like I said again, the only bit of caution I would use is that is all dependent on the individual who's created the route um, telling you that. So, you know, you can see them down here. You can see them on the left-hand side here. Um, let's go, for example, on this one, because I think that might be one of mine, actually. If I go and click on that, yes, look, that's one of mine. You click on that, you can see the route, you can... 3D previews are only available in the Pro Plus version, so you wouldn't see that in the Pro version. You've got the route, for example, and a, a summary. You've got things like the difficulty, the distance, duration, the amount of ascent and descent, the highest point and lowest point, and then any filters I've added to it. You've then got the details. So, you know, I've set all of these, best time of year, you can go up any time of year. It'll show you the track types, any safety information that I've put in there, similar routes nearby. You've got turn-by-turn -turn directions if they've put them. Not everybody does, but, for example, I've given you a very detailed description there. So, good stuff. Current information will just show you conditions nearby. Um, for example, there, if you click on that, there's none. So, this would require people to record them. So, I don't think that's very extensively used here. But if you were playing a mountaineering area, for example, then you probably would. So that's how to find a route. Uh, I've shown you how to plan a route. If I go back to my home screen, which is up here, then I'll show you how to turn a plan into a route. So if we go into plans here, here's my test plan. At the bottom here, I can share, edit, bin. I'll bin it later. But if you want to create a route from that, you press that button. If you want to use your plan to create a route, you have to add some additional information and you can have pictures and you can make your route public and share it. That's probably the only reason you'd create a route, to be honest with you. That's the only reason I would. So if I go and do that, I now get um, a bit more to fill in. I've had a photo. So you know, go here, you can select photos, for example. 
these are photos I've already uploaded or you can go and select photos from your drive you can select even videos if you want to it's quite good in that sense I'll add a photo there and you've got all these tabs so I can put a detailed description in I can put turn by turn directions a start and end points any recommendations I make any safety information any equipment you might need any tips and hints okay the details you know rating experience landscape stamina technique best time of year all these good things oh well, the good thing here is the duration elevate they're all calculated from the route for you although you could change that if you wanted to and then you can do these classifications here that help people understand uh, you know what type of route is it circular family friendly etc etc uh, you know, suitable for strollers so it's quite useful in that sense and then here you can just decide if you want to publish it or not so publish means that other people can see it but I'm not going to do that but that's what you can do with a route so I'll leave that page I'll probably bin this plan now because it's not one that I'm planning to do I've already got it planned that's okay so that in a nutshell is the map how to plan a route uh, how to find a route and then how to turn a plan into a route if that makes sense so that's pretty much all you really need to know uh, in terms of uh, the basics I will then just go on to uh, a quick slide now and show you the differences between the different subscriptions so you have pro pro plus and basic and then I'll also uh, do how to use a mobile and then take it out on a route just to show you how the navigation works so if we go to the subscription models you have three basic subscription basic which is free pro and pro plus and there are some differences between those those three so the very basic one it allows you to plan say print and navigate routes but that's only on certain types of map you can go and review and rate route, route routes for example and you can download a route's gpx data uh, for use within outdoor active only that's fairly basic uh, two key things there it hasn't got the ordnance survey maps and secondly one of the biggest benefits of the pro and pro plus is you can download an off offline map and you'll see that when i take you through it when i go out navigating with the phone if you download an offline map all you need is gps signal you don't need mobile data you don't need a mobile signal so it really does save if nothing else on your battery power so um that's what i tend to, to use the pro for so i went for the pro at 223 a month so you get all the basic features you get better maps you don't get ads to the downside to the basic one you get a lot of ads and the offline saving i then recently just moved to pro plus the main reason for me is you've got some better maps as well or different maps like harvey maps and some alpine maps you do also get some more premium content as they call it so premium routes more so maybe if you're going mountaineering or skiing another key one for me is the 3d planning so quite like the fact you can use a 3d map to get a bird's eye view of a route it's quite good with me as a like trying to set up this vlog on youtube i can use that as a bit of graphical sort of thing but if i go and look now you can look at all the features below here so if i look at the features basically search fire save routes by location you can do across all plan save and print your own routes you can do that across them all you've got navigation with speech output so I always have that turned off but actually it's a bit like Google Maps it will talk you through um, in the app when you're navigating your mobile it will tell you where to turn how long to the next turn that type of thing I don't use that I don't use it on my sat now I'm a bit of a control freak I think you've got various challenges you can have and win badges and prizes if that's what you like you can rate and comment and add photos you can download GPX data so even that's not bad you know on the free version that if you are using another tool you can still go on there on the free version and get roots of outdoor active and use them on other tools like Kaboot or all trails as a few of his ordnance survey you also get up to date information about any conditions that people have recorded avalanche reports the thing where it starts to go different now is terrain steepness you don't get that on the basic version you unfortunately also get ads on the basic version uh, you cannot access them offline in the basic version you can't compile your routes into nice lists or mark your favorites or anything like that uh, you cannot create shareable 3d videos but you can do that in both a pro and pro plus uh, 
trail networks are not shown on those maps. So like you saw earlier, the Limestone Way was on, the National Cycling Route was on. You don't get those on the basic version. Another key one I'll show you on the mobile, uh, on the walk tomorrow, is the Skyline Augmented Reality. So you can take your camera uh, you know, uh, through the app, open the camera up on your phone, hold it up to the Skyline, and it will show you any key peaks and places, which is quite good. Uh, obviously, you didn't get the Buddy Beacon, you get that only on the Pro and Pro Plus, which I spoke about earlier. You don't get on any of them apart from the Pro Plus, but you basically the interactive 3D preview, so you can look at your map in 3D. And then also, if you've got websites and blogs, what you can do, you can take the HTML code out of the Pro Plus, embed it into your website. So again, for a lot of people, Pro might well be good enough for you. Um, you get a global outdoor map and street map. Obviously, in the Pro and Pro Plus, you get... Uh, their own sort of outdoor active map you get the satellite imagery and you get a different topographical maps for different countries the key one for us i guess is the uk but you also go on the pro plus which you don't go on pro down at the bottom here is you get some of these additional maps here okay harvey maps which are they're a good alternative to warden survey some people are quite keen on those particularly if you're mountaineering and stuff you get all these other different maps, the bike map, for example, uh, and some of these maps for alpine sort of type of work. You also get in the Pro Plus, which you don't get in the others, animated weather map showing you rain, snowfall, temperature and cloud cover. Again, that is on the app. Um, we also then get on the on the, on the the free version, you get 30% discount at Partners on the Pro and Pro Plus, which is quite good. A share of a subscription goes to Saving the Planet. Uh, and then finally, you do just get a better, better level of content in the Pro Plus. So for a lot of people, I imagine the Pro is good enough. I really wanted the Pro Plus for the 3D interactive type stuff and, and some of the other maps. So that in a nutshell is the different subscription models. What I'm going to go on to next is the, um, is the mobile app, how to use that, because you can plan on there as well. I'll take you through that, and then I'll also take you out on a, on a short walk tomorrow and then show you how I use the Outdoor Active to navigate. So guys, um, I'm going to show you now how we use uh, Outdoor Active on the mobile. So install it from Google Play Store or uh, iPhone, whatever, Apple Store, whatever it's called. Uh, obviously, you can have a free subscription. I'm on the Pro Plus, so you're going to see a bit more. So if I click on Outdoor Active, that will log me straight into Outdoor Active. And it will home in um, on basically my location, and, and, and you can see you're on the map there. Very similar to the desktop version, so I won't take you through all of that, because that's the same. The only difference here, you have Skyline, which I'll show you when I'm out on the walk tomorrow, which is the augmented reality. Everything else is very similar. You have offline mode, so you can either download a map that's showing on the screen, or when you do a route, you can save it. And I'll show you that in a moment. Again, the topography that I spoke about is all there. That's exactly the same. So again, we won't bother with that. So, on the left-hand side, here's the main menu, which again, exactly the same as the desktop. This thing automatically syncs, if I remember rightly. Um, so, yeah, that's all good. And then you can either go plan, track, and stuff like that from there. Uh, discover, so find things that are going off. So that's exactly the same. But here we are, we're going to do plan and track. Um, I've got my home page exactly the same so again no difference just a mobile version but if i go to the map so the first thing i might want to do is actually do a plan so if i take my fingers i can just go in so it's two fingers and you can't see obviously because i'm recording the screen but you get your two fingers like most apps and you can zoom in and out and you can zoom in quite detailed about as much as you can but obviously let's be realistic that blue dot is uh you know my location so if I'm ever down here, for instance, then it will home in on the GPS. So if I want to sort of start off, I just go and hold. So you have to hold. So that's, that's the first bit. So I can start a plan here. I can route here. I can create new. One good thing it does tell you here. gives you all the coordinates. So if you're ever on a map, maybe you're off piste or whatever, you want to find out where you are, just hold and press on there for two or three seconds. gives you all of this. Your what three words, your grid reference, your all of that. Uh, um, so it's really good, and even your postcode and the road you're on. So really good stuff there. However, I'm not doing that, so I'll just escape out of there. So again, if you uh, 
press once or twice, the menus disappear at the top and the bottom, as you can see that. But if I go here, I might, I might say, I want to do a plan. I'll do the same plan I did on the desktop version. If I press plan, now it knows I'm trying to do a plan. So I will press and hold, and then that's root, that's point A. I can go along here. It's exactly the same as you do on the, uh, on the other one. Many things you can see here, you've got a very small part of the screen, which is why I prefer to plan on the old um, desktop version. But it's exactly the same here. I just keep bobbing along here, hold it down for a second or two. You'll get the same issue we had before, you know, where we want to come across here. So if I go, I want to go over there. It's done the same thing with this little root. Same thing at the bottom here. Undo, turn off the old uh, automatic sort of thing. And I can do a root straight across. And then I can just take that off here. For example, is again what type of route you're on, but I don't need to worry about that. So again, I'll just go back down the limestone way, all the way back to here, and then I can save a plan. One thing you haven't got here, you can't close a loop, but here's a summary at the top of the screen. You can see the distance, the time, the altitude, etc., etc. Here you can see a list of the points. Which is quite useful. Again, I don't want to see that now. Um, so I'll save that plan. I can navigate to that plan as well, but I'll show you that tomorrow when I go on a walk. So I'll save that plan now. Again, I can alter the title. I can put a summary in. I can show it on my map. I don't tend to show the routes on my map. You can have them all showing, but it gets very complicated sometimes so um, I'll now save that I can save it offline so you see here save a plan offline if I do that I can go and navigate to the plan so I'll save a plan then you can start to navigate and stuff like that if you want to so you see all of these plans here that I've done previously um, you can also see my tracks etc so that's how you create a plan very similar to the desktop version uh, you know but it's on your mobile um, you get a little bit more information, like I say, if I go and press on here and there's a point, I can get all this all this information here, but uh, I'm not wanting to do that at the moment. So that is as simple as it is planning on there. Um, if I go back to my page and I go to my plans and then I filter here, because I've got uh, a filter on if I remember rightly, I think it might be on my roots here. I don't want to be published. If I go back to my plans now, I can see the little bit of a filter issue there so again all my plans are listed there I can go in to see the test routes there from earlier I can go in there and I can start to download so if you go to a plan or a route and you're saying that I want to basically navigate to this um, offline press the download link in the bottom and that will save the offline version of the map you can see where I also have the box in the bottom there to create a route and navigate. So if I wanted to basically download that to my phone, I press that, I can cancel that. But that will download it. That is where you're going to have the ability to navigate offline without having any mobile signal, etc. Okay, that's as simple as it is. Really easy to use. And like I say, you can do planning on their uh, tracks. So again, a track when you start to navigate, uh, you basically will start to track a route automatically. The other thing you can just do is just start to track. So I can go in and say, you know what, I'm going to start a track. I'm going to have a wander around the village. If I press that start mm -hmm. button, that is now going to start tracking my movements uh, and how much time I've taken, where I've gone, how long and distance. But I'll mm -hmm. end that. And then if I end it, I've not moved anywhere. I want to save it. I'll just delete it. Okay, so you can just start a track. If you have a route you know, which you want to see how long it's taking you to do it, you can do it that way. That, in a nutshell, is pretty much it. So, very easy to use. I sometimes do do the planning on the mobile, but generally I like to do it on the desktop. Which, as you can see here, when you get down to that lower level, you, you have to keep continually scrolling around to see the entire map and try and plan the route out. But it's, it's very clear. Okay, so that's how to use the mobile. 
and then the next bit of the video I'll be taking it out on a walk with me and showing how it works how to navigate how to optimize it to make sure that your battery lasts as long as possible right guys so this bit is about um, how I set up outdoor active when I'm out on a route so open up the old outdoor active on the app go to my page I go to my plan on my route today I'm doing this Castleton to Pindale dirt low rate when it's pass as you can see here I've already saved this offline but if that was another route let me go and find another one for example this one <laughs> they're all saved aren't they so they would be Ah, you see this here download if I press that download that then loads the offline map for that area and that route onto my phone so I don't need um, a mobile signal or data and then what I will do up here if I'm going out I turn everything off I turn my Wi-Fi off turn my Bluetooth off turn my mobile data off anything else I can turn off just to uh, reduce the battery life or well, increase the battery life reduce the amount of sapping of the battery if you like so that's what I do and then uh, the next bit I'll show you how I navigate once I start a plan okay so we go into outdoor active find the plan which is this one save down there as you can see and what I do at the bottom here I just press the button that says navigation that will then fetch my initial as you can see and top off here just shows you directions so I'll show you that as we go around how far you've got left to go and hours remaining if I just tap on the screen that will all disappear and you can filter it like that or you can come down here see it again that also gives you a uh, audio gives you a description at the bottom as well so quite quite slick that I don't tend to have a lot of that on I prefer just to follow the pink lines so you can see it's zoomed in on me and then that will track me as I go around the route okay so as you can see the timer started so let's we'll crack on um, we're just here back on the path I took a bit of a detour because of the angle the tumulus is over to the right we're going to have a look at that shortly because I think that's just over there um, but I'm just going to show you the skyline of course I've got a really good view of the sort of skyline of the, the great ridge and that so if you go on to um, the three little dots there you'll see one called skyline I think you normally need to have data switched on for this so if I do that, that will open my camera up. And as you can see now, it's not perfect. Mam is not quite in the right place there. Mam Tor, Lord Seat, Castleton, Back Tor, which is just to the left. So as you can see, it's not perfect. You've got Back Tor, Lose Hill. Um, quiet edge, howden edge, some things are pulling the distance, back to all, it's not even showing Windhill, uh, Windhill, Hope, Aston, etc. So it's not bad, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but if you didn't know where you were, you know, that's not a bad little, not a bad little bit of the app that. We're just coming up to a junction, um, and a footpath across the field. I'm a bit unsure. Tap this here. Shows me which way I'm going. So if I move around that way, about two and a half hours left. It's showing me the path's going diagonal. And I can see here. Now you see I'm going straight on. So this path straight across that field. I can see the upper style as well. So again, if you're ever off relocate you can pause as well although it does track moving time and we're going to head off across with that pink so you can see that the blue line is where I've been the pink line is where I'm going to shows my altitude 1402 feet etc etc so all good stuff we're going to head off across there now good thing about this is it gives you a warning as you can see on the screen now saying I'm 300 and so many feet away from the route, you can actually set that to a vibration on your phone as well, which uh, I've not bothered with uh, personally. 
but uh, once I'm back on track, I'll be fine. So I'm just taking a bit of a detour here. Um, we'll catch up with the route back over here on the last day and way. So I've been able to cross sections of that a few times, but that's a really good um, feat to that, especially if it's bad visibility. I've used it a couple of times. Once when I was going across uh, the Kinder Plateau in the snow and uh, I lost the path because it was all just snow and floods and God knows what and uh, yeah that was really useful kept me uh, well on track that so uh, yeah very useful feature I'll just tap there that'll take me to my final location zoom out so you can see there that took us nearly five hours according to that quite a bit of stop in the start in though Average of two mile an hour, that feels about right. Uh, I finished now. So what you do at the end, what you do at the end of the um, of a of a, of a, of a route, because you can pause it while you're midway around, just press end. It'll tell you, do you want to train? Do you want to end? It just shows you some stats there. So we did about fourteen hundred foot of climbing, eight and a half miles, just under and just under just over four hours. So end it. It will default to tracking on the date and the time. You can add photos if you want, all that good stuff. I'll just save that track now. That'll mm. all sync up. Okay. Because I think I'm back on Wi-Fi now. Yeah, yeah. Don't want to see all that though. So if we go into my tracks, this is the latest track. And you can see there, 8.6 miles. At 3 hours 21. So... There's actually three hours 21 of walking, so I did stop quite a bit, so that feels a bit better. So four hours in total, but half an hour of that, I was taking videos, talking to camera and stopping. But actually three, and a, three hours 21 minutes of actual moving time. You can see here the time and date, the elevation profile. So as you can see, that was quite a good climb at the start, pretty much up to 1,500 feet, I think, at the highest point without much stopping. A bit of a dip and then back up again and then down so uh, that was quite a quite a sharp ascent you can see that first ascent jesus um 8.6 miles uphill was 3.4 downhill was 3.3 there's only really just under two miles of flat section there start and finish times so time spent moving three hours 21 the track recording including all the pauses and that was five hours so sounds about right half five now and tracking your pill time and your you know, whatever. Average speed was two and a half. I tell you, this is uncanny. No matter what I do, whenever I walk, it's always two and a half miles. And as you can see there, I probably go uphill a bit quicker than I do downhill. Uh, and then about three mile an hour on flat terrain, which, you know, going back to that Naismith equation that I formerly I spoke about on the, on the, my video, um, you know, uh, one of the previous videos, I think it was the one to Bradwell. Yeah, that one. Um, it's uncanny, isn't it? <laughs> he says three miles an hour plus, um, you know, uh, allow for ascent and descent. So, yeah, that's what it does on the track. And then you can just save that. That's been saved now. You can actually make that into a route if you want from there. You can make a video, 3D mm -hmm. video of it, etc., etc. But, uh, yeah, that's it, really. Um, done and dusted.